Houston-based Intuitive Machines hopes to accomplish something never done before, safely deliver a commercial robotic lander to the surface of the moon. As of February 21st, the Nova Sea spacecraft is cruising towards a landing near the moon's south pole on February 22nd at 5.49 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or 22.49 UTC. Cameras provided by Canadensis Aerospace captured the images sent back to Earth the day after launch. They showed the detail on the lander and also managed to capture a view of the Falcon 9 upper stage that the lander rode to space. Before it launched, when the Falcon 9 rocket was still on the pad, Intuitive Machines CEO Steve Altimus said he brought back a tradition from his days working for NASA and the Space Shuttle program. Having 25 years at NASA before I formed Intuitive Machines, every time before I launched the Space Shuttle, um, I would spend some quiet time with the, with the rocket, uh, the tank and the orbiter, and just say, okay, get one with the, with the shuttle and, and uh, listen to it and talk to it and feel the energy of the machine. Well, I wanted to do that here and like coming full circle back to Pad A and to see the Falcon 9 5500 sitting there with our Nova C OD lander, a nickname of our lander on top. I just wanted to be there with it and just kind of get a sense of it. Uh, it's a scrappy rocket and uh, we got a really uh, healthy spacecraft on board and we're looking forward to successful launch. Three, two, one, ignition and liftoff. And a successful launch is exactly what they got. Less than an hour later... I am one Odysseus lunar lander separation confirmed. The lander, named Odysseus, began its own odyssey in space. It carries with it a dozen payloads, including six science instruments from NASA. It's just the second in a line of missions for the agency's Commercial Lunar Payload Services, or CLIPS, program. We have um, instruments to look at communication and navigation. We have instruments that are going to look at, um, at uh, radio frequency astronomy topics or looking at what's called the photoelectron sheath in the atmosphere, the very tenuous atmosphere on the moon. We've got laser retroreflectors so that once the lander lands at that area in the general South Pole region, we could use our Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter um, LOLA experiment, which is a laser experiment to ping it with a laser beam and find out exactly what its um, location is. So we have six um, payloads in, in total that NASA is paying intuitive machines to fly in this mission. One of the other interesting ones is one of the payloads is actually built into the lander itself. It's really a high-tech gas uh, gauge method so that the uh, technologists at NASA can test a real lunar lander as it flies to the moon and as it descends and lands to the surface, how well can they measure the amount of liquid methane and liquid oxygen actually remaining in the tanks to go down? And that's a really interesting question because when you're just up in space in microgravity, if you're not propulsively thrusting, you know, the, the liquid fuel and oxidizer doesn't necessarily go to the bottom of the tank where, say, it would on a car where you can just pull it into the engine. You have to find a way to get it there and you have to find a way to know how much do you have left based on what you use, other than just measuring how much you pulled out versus how much you thought you put in at the first, at the, uh, originally. So we have six really unusual different experiments that'll gather information either about the journey to the moon itself, the journey down to the surface, or actually uh, look at the environment of the moon itself when they get to that South Pole region. Ignition. A big test for Odysseus came on Friday when teams were finally able to conduct what's called a commissioning burn. This 21 second full thrust burn was a crucial test of the 3D printed engines and the propulsion system as a whole. That commissioning burn around 18 hours after we launch is a very critical step. We have to prove that that engine actually functions in, in the vacuum of space. We've never been able to do that because we haven't been in space. With that burn in the rear view mirror, Intuitive Machines moved on to the first planned trajectory correction maneuver on February 18th. That was followed by a second TCM that lasted eight seconds on February 20th. Intuitive Machines says that second burn actually created enough precision to remove the need for a third TCM. The next hurdle for Odysseus was the lunar orbit insertion burn. If you fail to do that one, you fly right by the moon. Um, so that one's pretty critical. You have to get that right. And of course, the last one is the, the long burn from the time that, that we initiate descent all the way down to the surface. Intuitive Machines said on the morning of February 21st that the 408 second burn was also successful and placed Odysseus in a 92 kilometer circular lunar orbit. Trent Martin. The Vice President of Space Systems for Intuitive Machines says that while nothing is a certainty when it comes to attempting to land on the moon, the amount of testing that went into the propulsion systems 
gives them a good chance to sink this metaphorical shot on goal. In the acceptance testing of this engine, we ran it through those in the entire set of burns that we would expect to see with this engine. So we know it can handle it, we know it can do it, it's done it uh, previously. Now we just have to go do it on the way to the moon. Reporting for Spaceflight Now, I'm Will Robinson-Smith.